Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we talk all things Canvas LMS. In case you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am the Canvas Queen and today I'm going to be continuing my HTML series and we're going to take a look at how you can create drop down menus or like hidden text. You click either the text or a button and it will drop down all of this hidden information on a page. This is a great thing to utilize if, for example, you want to shorten up your pages, but you need a lot of content on them. Now, of course, before we get into the main part of this video, if you would like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would greatly appreciate that. All right, let's see how we can create these drop down menus. how you can create drop down text or hidden text also called drop down menus with html code so i'm going to show you two ways you can do this so i've created two pages and so we're going to get started with the first drop down text example and what i'm going to do is click edit here and we are going to go back to this lovely html editor button and we're gonna start coding. But the easiest way to do this is to use my resource, the HTML Canvas Code Key. So what you'll do is in the description of this video, you will find a link to my TPT store, and you're going to find my Canvas HTML Editor Code Keys. Download this for free, you will find this lovely document that I update all the time. And we're going to go to the table of content and go to drop down menu number one. And we now are going to copy this code. So copy it, go back to Canvas HTML editor and paste it in. So now when I click save, I have this awesome drop down text menu, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to edit this now to our liking. So the only issue is you'll notice that I cannot add my text or information that I want that is expanded in the rich content editor here. I can alter the title, but everything that I'm going to do to edit this is going to be on the HTML side for today, which really isn't that hard if you understand where you need to go for the most part. How we're going to edit this to our liking is we're going to first start with the title, input whatever title you want. It could be answer. So like maybe when it expands, it shows an answer to a problem or maybe it's a definition. Maybe it includes additional helpful information. Completely up to you. I'm going to do a definition, for example, today. We're going to just do, since my background's in science, we're going to do waves as our definition. And I'm even going to add click to expand definition. So maybe I am including an entire page of definitions here. I don't know. That's up to you. And then we have information one, information two, information three. All right. So where information one is, I'm going to place my definition and I'm going to then actually come over to the HTML editor, hit enter, and add an image of a wave. All right, so I'm going to come here to my images, upload image, and we're going to find types of waves, open this, and submit, and not within my expanded. So you can see I'll click here, and <laughs> there's my expanded information. If you like this, you can keep it this way. I'm actually going to put it where information two is, and I'll show you how to do that. So we'll click edit. We're gonna go over to our HTML button, and we're going to find that image. This part of the code means it's closed. This part of the code means it's open. So I'm gonna take everything that says IMG until I see this closing code. And I'm going to cut this out and we're going to go to information two and paste it in. So now when I save this, and I click to expand. Now I have the image within my 
expanded text information here, which is awesome. And then let's add information three. We'll go back to edit and I'm just going to add a link. So we clicked the HTML button again. And for information three, all I'm going to do is add watch the video about waves in the following link and then colon and then paste in that lovely uh link there and then we will save this all of that info is right here ready for me to go now let's see i don't like this still I don't like the font size. I don't like the color in the background. Maybe I need to make the visuals a little bit better. I am going to go back to edit and then you'll see. So let's change the color of the background. Where this is located is we can just do control F and type in background dash color. And there it is right here. And I need to change this hex code essentially or color code. I actually really love this little Chrome extension, which is called the eyedropper. And you can essentially pick a color from anywhere on uh, your, your web page. So maybe I like this pink color up here. It can access that. Maybe I like this gray color, but it, it'll save the color. So I have all of these colors or you can even use this to find a color of your liking. So I still want to kind of go yellowy, but I don't want it to be that vibrant of a yellow. So I am going to select this code, copy it, and I'm going to paste it right here. Paste. And now we're going to click save. And so now when I expand, now it is a color that is a little bit easier on our eyes. <laughs> Uh, and if we want to change the font size, so maybe we think the font is a little too small, all we have to do is go to our paragraph P. This is the first um, information we have, which is a disturbance that travels through medium. We have style color black. So meaning the text color is black. All I have to do is type in font dash size. And now let's say I want it to be size 14. We're gonna write 14 pixels and then close that with a semicolon. And now all I have to do for the second bit of text is copy this. And we're going to come down here to the next paragraph of text. And after that semicolon, paste it into this section so that all of the font is going to be the same size. All right, so when I click this, we can see that the font is a little bit bigger and I can adjust the size however I like here, which I think this looks great. So I'm gonna keep it and we're going to move on to the next one. All right, here is the next drop down text, but this time it is a button. So what I'm going to do again is we're gonna go back to our canvas, LMS drop down menu. This is drop down menu number three. You will notice there is a second one that I have in here. I have three total, but one and two are essentially the same. So that's why I'm going to show you three instead. So we're going to copy this, copy this code, and go back to our drop down button page. Edit this, go to the HTML editor, paste this in. And now we're gonna just save it and see what it looks like currently. So instead of having just text, we have this awesome button here. So when we click it, oops, click it, we have more text at the bottom. So what I really love to use this for is for like answer keys within like text pages. So maybe you have a question and you want your students to answer something, but you also want them to have the answer available. This is just great. So like it keeps them on track. So let's kind of format it that way. So instead of having right here, which says click here for additional information, let's change this title of the button and go answer and leave it absolutely like that. And then instead, we're going to have our answer of the information here. So one thing I actually really like to do for the answer is I'm just going to put 
answer is dot 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 and I like to make sure that this is actually red. So I'm going to go to my paragraph and I'm going to style this. So space, type in style. All right, so we have style equals color red, right? So make sure you have exactly this right after your P, otherwise it will not work. And then we will click save. And so now when I select answer, now we have it in a red text so that you can see the answer. I don't know. I just like the difference in color for me, but it, of course it's a preference. You can use this for anything. One last thing I'm going to show you is that if you want to create multiple buttons, you cannot just copy and paste. Now, here's the reason why. Because when you do this, you have to change it up just a little bit. Right, so when I click answer, it's going to actually open for both of these. Why? That's because, unfortunately, the code label is identical or ID. So see how right here it says ID, we have instructions. In order for this second button to open on its own, I have to just change the name of the ID and we're going to change it to instructions one. And there's another section in here, over here on area controls, instructions, also needs to be a one. So now when I click save and I click the first button, we have answer, answer is, and then we have a separate button and it works out that way because we have to rename them, otherwise everything will open at once. So I just wanted to show you guys that. So if you're adding multiple buttons to a page or in different areas, make sure that you change it every single time. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful. And if you have any further in questions on how to complete these drop down menus, feel free to leave me a question in the comments below. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.